On today's episode, we're trussing and linking the rear diff. Sponsored in part by TMR Customs, Zuki Freak Garage, and Strikeforce67.ca, the official Canadian home of GoTreads, Canada's professional traction tool. Welcome back to Fab and Adventures. Hey, so on today's episode, we're gonna be installing the rear truss and the four link system that I got from TMR Customs. And I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to check out all these parts. I'd also like to give Tim a big shout out for helping us decide on what parts we actually need to complete this here suspension system. Okay, so installing a four link system is not exactly just straightforward. You can't just buy some tube and some links and mount them wherever you feel like because more than likely your anti-squat numbers are gonna be way out and your suspension's not gonna work properly like how it should be. You'll end up binding a drive shaft or something like that, a U-joint or something like that. So I did a ton of research and watched a ton of videos and got my head wrapped around how the four link system's supposed to work and I downloaded a four link calculator I'll put a link to that calculator in the description below. So if you, any of you guys are on the verge of doing a four link or thinking about doing a four link, you'll want to have a look at that calculator. And that calculator is basically going to tell us where, yeah. I mean, all our links here on the back of the diff and on down on the diff here, there's not a whole lot of changes you can do, but where they mount on the frame, there's a bunch of changes that will change the way the whole suspension works. So we'll talk about that later. First. Let's get this axle out and get it cleaned up. Yeah, we gotta clean it all up so that we can put Mount the truss the on and on. start mounting stuff. Yeah. Let's get after it. All right, so we got all the rust ground off this diff here. Now it'll be a nice clean surface to be able to mount the truss to. And I just wanna say that was a super dusty job. And in the past, I never used to wear dust mask and I've paid the price now. As soon as I grind a little bit of metal, you know, it starts to really bother me. So now I wear a dust mask and I know you didn't see it when I, in the little bit of footage there that I did video of it but I ended up putting a dust mask on and these were brand new filters and you can see just how dirty they are. They're perf, like pert near 100% black and all that stuff would have been in my lungs. So make sure you guys don't do like me and make sure you wear a dust mask when you do this super dirty work and it's gonna pay off in the long run. So now that I've got this all cleaned up and I've had my little rant about that, we are going to spray a little bit of a weld through primer on this diff. That way once the truss is on, it's at least got some primer underneath it and uh, should be good to go. So I'm gonna spray this stuff on, then I'm gonna go fire up the tractor, wait for this stuff to dry a little bit, then I'm gonna lift it up, get it to a more workable height and uh, put the truss on and start putting the link mounts on. Okay, so I started looking at fitting the truss here and when I set it down on there, it uh, there's a vent back here that came up and bent over like that and then you had your vent tube on, you know, to vent your diff. And it, so it sat right on there. So I tried to remove that vent, I ended up breaking it. So I had to spend a little bit of time and build myself a new one on the lathe. So. It's just a piece of aluminum that I drilled through here, drilled here, drilled and tapped, and then I had a uh, barb fitting that's just gonna thread into it. So now we'll just be able to drive 
this down back in that hole and then we'll have to notch out this here where the vent is going to stick out. So I'll just show you a little bit closer up what I'm talking about. All right, so there you can see the vent hole and when the truss sits on it, that truss comes down pretty well right over top of it and the tube came out and pointed or no, the tube came out and pointed up here and then there's a rubber hose on it. So now we're going to put this tube in here like this and we'll just direct it that way and then our vent line can go that way or however, whichever way I'm going to do it, probably that way. And we'll just tap this fitting down into that hole, it's just a pressed fit and then we can put some thread tape on this little uh, barb fitting, put it in there and we'll be smiling and then we just have to notch the truss to fit. go she's seated home in there solid now we'll drop the truss on it and see just how it looks I'll be close I might have to cut a little bit more out of this side here here you can see I'll give you a little detail on the truss here from TMR. It is nicely fit, nicely cut. I mean, these things just slide in and out like they should. And then that'll all get welded up once it's on the diff. She's a real beauty part, probably laser cut, I'm guessing. So I'm just going to coat the inside of this truss with some of this weld through primer and then we'll be setting her on, fitting her and uh, welding her in. Alright, so it appears that I've ran into a little bit of a snag. You can see that this uh, truss is meant for the newer style 14 bolt with the ribs and it's touching here, it's contacting here, so I'm gonna have to probably cut out about that much. It's touching here, so I'm gonna cut this out about that much. And it's also touching here just a little bit, so I'm gonna cut it out like that and then we'll set her back down and try it out. All right I got it fitting pretty good now. I think it's not touching the main housing here anymore just barely. Uh, a little disappointing that it didn't fit perfect but like I said, it looks like this truss was meant for the newer style 14 bolt. Yeah, I had to do a little bit of trimming basically right here and that's everything. So, you know, it's minor, but it's a little disappointing. It didn't just drop right on and weld. But now we're just gonna tack it in a few places just to make sure everything's good. You know, put a clamp in here and pull this down where it needs to be and uh, weld her in. All right, that's enough welding for one day. <laughs> I've pretty much been on this all day. And really, it wouldn't have been too bad if I didn't have to make this little bracket here. I probably took, you know, a couple of hours by the time I found some stock and turned it down on the lathe and drilled and tapped and all that. And the little bit of fitting I had to do here on the truss to make sure the truss was down perfect. You know, that all takes time. Uh, but here we've got her all pretty well welded up. 
and I never welded to the housing and you don't have to weld to the housing the truss adds strength to the axles and uh, if you don't know how to weld to cast iron or nodular iron or whatever you should just leave it to a professional I opted to not weld to it I don't think it's gonna be a big deal I think this is gonna add a ton of strength to it so tomorrow we'll be adding the upper link brackets the lower link brackets the brackets on the frame and hopefully we'll have links in by tomorrow afternoon tomorrow night all right we're back here this morning and I started laying out some parts here and looking at them just to get familiar with how all this goes together like these are multiple piece units you know it kind of goes together like a jigsaw puzzle and uh, it just takes a little bit of time to get your head wrapped around it you know these are pretty self-explanatory they're just a uh, the upper link mount goes right on top of the diff and this here is the uh, lower frame mount or upper and lower frame mount combination and that's like a jigsaw puzzle that's what all these parts are here is two uh, frame mount lower and upper mounts so I'm just going to show you basically quick how they go together I'm just going to tack these mounts together I'm going to find center line on the diff I'm going to tack these babies in and then we'll start figuring out where everything goes on the frame and go from there so let's go over to the welding table and tack this baby together okay so what you're looking at here is the instructions on how these frame mounts are put together like a jigsaw puzzle take your lower piece and here they're showing both left and right sides being put together we're just going to do one of them so basically it says there's this plate, there's this plate. Yeah, if I can get my act together here. Then you scroll over, there's this plate. And then what I've done, because when you weld, this stuff's gonna wanna twist and I wanna keep a little bit of clearance so that it's easy to slide these in and out later on if you have to. So let's just put the bolt in. Put that where that's got to go. We'll slide this 15 thou shim in right there. And then we'll put a bunch of washers on here. And I'm putting a bunch of washers on because I don't want to ruin the nut. And uh, I can't remember the name of the nut, but it's like a lock nut, locking type nut, just not a nylock. lock. So there we go, that's how the first part of this mount goes. So I'm gonna just throw a couple of tacks in here just to hold it where it needs to be and then we'll mount up the other stuff. And we should have a little bit of play. The bolt should slide right out. And so should that. So then when you go to put it back together, you have just a little bit of play. Simple as that. So now let's go to the next step. The next step is basically putting this piece on. And it's just like a jigsaw puzzle. There's a little notch cut out here. There's a little tab there. It drops in, leaves you this, basically leaves you this corner to weld here. Beautiful. Now the next step here, it shows it to flip it over. Okay, so basically following the instructions, this piece, this piece, that, that. I'll put this over here so it doesn't get full of spatter. And we'll just start sort of tacking some pieces up. Just light little tacks in case we have to make some changes. Now here's where we're gonna want probably one of them knuckles again. To get that where it needs to be. Okay, so I got my joint in here, the Johnny joints in there, the shim is in there. I never put no spacers. Well, the spacers in there, but I didn't put no washers in. I'm just gonna tack it. There. 
in there. So it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle basically, but everything fits very nicely and the cuts on these are like smooth like butter. There's no grinding, no finishing, no nothing. Just depends on how bad your welds are to how much grinding you'll have to do. Mine should be fine. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and blast this sucker together and then I'll be able to look at it on the frame and just see how it's gonna mount up. All right, so now we're just gonna find center line and I've already kind of found it. It's right here. That way we get our upper mounts in right dead center on the axle. So we'll just take this here, we'll mark a straight, that's our center. And then you have a link here and a link here and they're going to go on center but we need enough room that we can get our nuts in there something like that and then that's basically you know you got to be able to get your nuts on here yet you can't drag your bolt out so the bolts have to come in from this way so we have enough room to put our nuts on there no problem tighten that all down that should be good so now we want to set these on a 20 degree angle roughly so let's just see what we can do here 20 degrees is like that they say that's about minimum that you want that's enough to get our nuts on in there and that should be on center of the axle 20 degrees out that's what you want at least a minimum of 20 degrees or 40 degrees combined for your upper links let's just tack these here in place so i've run into a little bit of a problem here this truss here is two inches above the diff these links are another two inches above and you want Say with a 40 inch tire, you want 25% of your tire diameter as a link separation. So that would equate to a 10 inch link separation. And if with this truss on here, I can only put this lower link basically there. And that gives me a link separation of about 12 and a half inches, which is quite a bit. Plus it's hanging lower than the diff a little bit. So, you know, she's hanging low there already you add some more stuff hanging low it's just more stuff to get hung up on so I think what I'm gonna have to do is trim this back here so I can rotate this up more straight on and that way we can get our proper you know like 10 inches of link separation basically puts that thing pretty well level with the diff all right so I've come up with a plan to fix my conundrum and it seems to work so what i did is i took an inch out of this i put my little ruler on here made it flush with the back side scribed a line and i don't know if you'll be able to see it or not but i'll just take the zip cut cut it off there that rotates it up enough to give me my 10 inch separation and we're going to go with that so here you can see the modified one versus the factory one now this is a universal four link kit I kind of forgot about that so I suspect there's going to be some modifications that you're just going to have to do to make it fit your specific application you know this is not a four link kit meant for a 1972 FJ40 with a 14 bolt diff blah 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 right it's a universal kit and so if that's the little bit of modifying you got to do to make it work it's actually not that bad it's way less work than trying to make these parts all by yourself so let's modify this one and get it tacked in there then we'll be able to throw the tires on wheel it back underneath the frame and then start looking at where the frame mounts got to go all right we're going to set these as far as we possibly can outboard and still make it work puts it about there now we'll just take a few measurements make sure everything is right and put the other side on make sure they're equal length apart 
and we should be good. Looks to be equal distance apart. I'll just throw a couple more tacks here on this side and then we'll be good.